Welcome to the Home CSP Bench. In this video I'm going to be going over a new temperature differential controller. I've got a unit wired up here for test purposes. We'll have these on our website bare bones and with this uh, nice NEMA rated enclosure. I'll go over the features of the board here. So it's got a 16 character 2 line LCD display, backlit display. The relay is rated at a 10 amp, uh, or excuse me, 20 amp output, 125 volt, 12 amp, uh, 250 volt. So, I'm going to say safely 10 amp loads on that. Uh, we've got normally open, normally common, normally closed connections available there. Uh, connections for the two temperature sensors and the flow sensor on the end here, which has both a 5 volt ground and the flow signal itself. Uh, nominal 12 volt power, about 7 to 12 volt recommended here uh, for the supply. And it's pretty simple. A little onboard temperature sensor here as well. So I've got this board here wired up. Looks a little bit messy. We've got the uh, 12 volt power coming in here. Um, flow connection Pay no attention to these wires because the JST connector here is kind of cross-swapping the, uh, the wire colors. Um, we've got two thermistor sensors. These are uh, standard 10K uh, NTC thermistors. Waterproof ends and, uh, and the relay connection here. I've got a little uh, green LED wired up uh, to simulate the uh, uh, pump or whatever load you might have connected to the relay here. Um, typically be a pump I uh, would be using with a flow sensor here. So now I'm going to turn power on to the unit. You see the blue power LED, green status LED blinks at the beginning, a little splash screen and we're at the uh, main menu. So, got a pump mode, st stats setup, and units choices that are available. If we go up from pump, we get the idle screen, which has our, our mode, um, the volume, flow, temperature 1 and temperature 2 displayed here. Pressing, uh, pressing any of the keys will take us back to the, the main screen. So you can see we're in manual mode. So in manual mode I can go ahead and toggle the pump on. And so you can see that green LED on there. Right now I've got the, the flow sensor turned off because obviously there's no flow. If we had the flow sensor enabled then it would uh, uh, sh shut off if there was uh, no flow detected. So I'll just go ahead and turn the pump off now. So the idle screen gradually dims after about a minute or so. It will uh, darken completely, kind of as a power saving um, function. You can notice if I press the key back to a full brightness there, it'll just start slowly, slowly dimming. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and go through the menus now. So we've already covered the pump function. Next is the mode function. There's basically three modes available. Heat, cool, and manual mode. I'm just going to go ahead and select the heat mode now. We were in manual before. It's got a statistics um, screen. Um, just turn it on so it's not really much statistics, but there's a minimum, uh, maximum temperature, um, volume, runtime, kilowatt hour, and temperature of the board are displayed there. And we can clear the stats if we want. There's no point right now. Next is the setup menu. This says the temperature differential. Um, so this is the minimum temperature differential we want to see between our, our two um, points and then the minimum temperature at which we should be coming on at which the temperature differential then begins to apply once again these are all in, in Celsius um, temperature max 80 degrees Celsius so it won't operate above then freeze so it's got a, a freeze loop function that'll run the uh, temp around the the pump. Um, so this sets the minimum temperature, uh, for, for sort of the maximum temperature at which that would uh, kick in. And lastly is the uh, flow configuration. So I had it off before. I'll go ahead and turn it on now. You can see we've got the half inch three quarter and one inch an inch and a quarter uh, sensor sizes available here and I've got the half inch one connected so that's what I'm going to select and that covers the uh, setup menu that we were in and uh, the only other option is the uh, units menu which will let us change to uh, English uh, for uh, display purposes. So if we go back to the top here now we'll see our units in Fahrenheit and also uh, gallons instead of liters. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the unit back into uh, metric mode. this a little bit easier for demonstration purposes. So right now, okay, we can see our temperatures hovering around 26 degrees and in the setup um, I've got the minimum set at 30 degrees. So that should be fine. I should be able to do that. All right, so the units are set back in a uh, centigrade right now, just to make it easy to compare to the uh, the settings. So we've got a 30 degree threshold right now, about a 25 degree uh, ambient. We'll be climbing here to about 26 or so. Um, so I'm going to take. The T2, hold it in my hand. I'm going to see it go up a little faster than the other one here. Okay, so when that hits 30 or so, uh, 30 because that's our, our min our trigger. The relay. But there we go. So it went high and then low and then it said alarm. Um, so since this wasn't hooked up to a pump and nothing flowed and I've got the pump configured, it triggered the alarm mode. So and now we've got this blinking LED there um, as well as see 
it says alarm right there. Um, instead of saying pump on the first menu choice now, it says reset. So I pressed reset and what happened? Well, it just triggered right again. So this time I'm going to go ahead and blow uh, on this. So we can see everything's working, we're getting flow. As long as I keep this spinning, the asterisk also indicates our high, uh, but we drop below, and so it turned off. Now I'll just go ahead and hold it again. So across 30, it turned on. I'm going to let it stop spinning. And that triggered the pulse flow alarm again. So if we don't want to have to deal with that, we just go in the uh, here and we take the flow and turn pulse flow off. And now, the pump is on, and it doesn't care about the flow being present or not. So, I can also take, I'm going to take T1 here, and I'm going to raise its temperature. And put a little bit of heat on this, keep this one above 30. And if once the difference got too small between the two, it shut off the uh, the output just like it should. So that's the basic um, temperature differential operation. So the T-diff is great for any time we've got a situation where we've got, you know, two different temperatures and when the difference between them reaches a certain point we want something to happen. Temperature differential controller allows us to make that happen. And this is ideal, in our case, for solar heating purposes. Moving hot and or cool water around. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and check out the Home CSP store.